Welcome back to C# -sharp for Total Noobs on Developer Ramp Up. In this part of the training, we will get serious about writing our own code because we will write our very first C# -sharp program. Yes, you heard correctly. During the first lesson where we actually write some code, we will also launch our first program. So, let's get started. In order to do that, we would need Visual Studio 2017. And during the previous videos, I've instructed you to install Visual Studio 2017 on your computer. Of course, the community edition, which is totally free, so you don't have to pay anything for it. So if you have installed Visual Studio 2017, then just to launch the application. And when it is launched, you should see a screen similar to what you see on my screen here. Of course, I have some things like the recent project that, that I worked on that you won't have any if this is the really first time that you ever launch Visual Studio. So let's go and create our very first project. In Visual Studio, we can do this by going on File, New and then choosing Project. And here we'll have to choose few things in order to make this running. First of all, here on the left side in this dialog window, let's make sure that we first choose .NET Core. This means that we want to build a .NET Core application. And here we have to choose a template. The good thing about Visual Studio is that it comes already with a lot of predefined templates. This means that if you choose, for instance, other more complicated application types like ASP.NET Core MVC and so on, there is some basic configuration of the application itself that Visual Studio already does for you. In our case with the console application, we will uh, just have a static void main method. Don't get disheartened about these names here. We'll learn exactly what a method is a little bit later in the course. However, we still have to choose a name for my application. And since this is our very first application, let's name it my first app. But since I've already used this name once, I would change it to my first app 10. And I'm fairly close that I shouldn't have any project that is called my first app 10. And then just click OK. And right now Visual Studio will take a while until it will load this template, this console application template running in .NET Core. And then we can start see around a little bit what we can do with the application. And in fact, that is exactly what we're going to do in this video. The main objective of this specific video is to get a little bit acquainted with the Visual Studio um, Integrated Development Environment or IDE to see around what components do we have in Visual Studio, where do we look for different things and so on. Now, coming back to Visual Studio, our project is now fully loaded and we can see that Visual Studio has, in my opinion, two or three different very important parts. One of the parts is this main window that we have here where we already see some code here. And this is basically the place where we will write all our code. Now, on the right side, we have something which is called Solution Explorer. And this is a very important thing because in Visual Studio, as I already told, when we create a new project, we have to go on File New Project. But we have to understand that uh, the way Visual Studio likes to organize the files that we work on. And in order to have a project, we also need a solution. So in this Solution Explorer, first we see the solution itself. And you see that uh, it has the same name as the first project that I have created. And then this is the project, my first app 10. And this program.cs is the code that we will, that we are about to run just in a few minutes. Now you have to understand that within a solution, you can have multiple projects. For instance, if you right click on solution, you have here the option to add and add a new project. And that would add a brand new project to your solution. This is a very good way to organize your different components of the application that you would like to develop inside the same solution so that you can access them very easily. However, during this course, we will work mostly with one single project loaded in the solution. 
You have, however, to know that here in the Solution Explorer, you see the solution, the project, and the different project files, which include our program.cs that we will use a lot during this training, but also other files that we might want or need in our application, like images, like if we build a uh, ASP.NET Core application, CSS files, JavaScript files, and so on. So all files that are related to a project will be inside this project and are generally called project files. Right now we do not have many project files, but it's enough to get started. The next thing that is very important is this main part where we will write our code. And you see here a lot of things that might seem strange to you right now, but we'll look a little bit deeper into what we have on the screen right now just in a few seconds. Another very important thing here is this uh, debug button or, the, or this green arrow. What this actually does, it simply runs our application. So if we click it, what it would happen is that Visual Studio will try to launch this program and the program will execute the code that is written here within these uh, angle brackets. Oh, okay, it takes a few seconds the first time that um, the program compiles and then it will briefly open this console and it will then probably close it down instantly just after displaying this hello world. So we did not even have time to see what happened. But before we go any further, I just want to spend a few words on how Visual Studio does this. So how do we execute this program? And here, one thing that is very important and maybe it's also uh, worthy to write down is that C Sharp is a compiled language. So this means that our code in order to, to run as a program needs to be compiled. And in fact, in .NET, we have, uh, I would say, two different uh, compilation steps. And this here, once again, is an oversimplification, but I think that it's uh, the easiest way to understand exactly how .NET works. You know that our computers usually work with binary or the processors work with uh, different instructions. So each processor has a different instruction set and when we run a program, what we need to do or what our program needs basically to do is to give to the processor the instructions that are needed in order to complete the program that we have defined. Now, when we compile here in Visual Studio, there are two different steps. First step is that uh, we have the compilation to intermediate language. It is called Microsoft uh, Intermediate Language. What this actually means is that when you do this, actually Visual Studio takes these files or what you have written here and it compiles them to some other files that are called intermediate languages. And if we go on this project and uh, right click and uh, go on open folder in File Explorer, you would actually see that here in bin and then debug and netcore app 2, we have your different files like this, my first app DLL. So this is nothing else than a DLL file. So a file that uh, Visual Studio has compiled with our program and it has translated it to what we call intermediate language. Now the next step is right when we execute the program. So if we have an exe file, if we execute the, the, the program, then another compilation step kicks in and this is called the just-in-time compilation. So .NET has a just-in-time compiler. What does this mean? It means that when we run the application, what the .NET framework does is uh, basically taking uh, this is taking uh, the files that we have compiled to intermediate language and it, uh, it simply translates them into CPU instructions so that our program is really ready to run. So just remember when we are compiling a C-sharp program, usually this is a two-step compilation. First, we compile to intermediate language, which are the normal files that we usually see like DLLs or EXE. 
And then when we execute the specific program, then there is also a just-in-time compilation that takes these uh, intermediate language files and translates them into CPU instructions. Let's go, however, now back to our application. And we want right now to make the console stay open after this message is displayed. So to do that, we would have to write console.readline. It's not right now very important to understand what this does. In this stage of this training, it's important to know that when we do a console read line, the console expects us to enter something there. So it will simply stop. In this case, when we run this program again, it will remain open after the message hello world is displayed. And in fact, this is the case. We see the message and the console stays open. If we click enter, then it will be closed. So hooray, this is really our very first program, our hello world program. And believe me, every developer started with a hello world application. Let's go now back to the code window or to the place where we write our code. And we want to understand a few things here also. The first thing to understand here is that uh, we use these brackets. So uh, you see that we have different set of brackets. Each uh, opening bracket has a closing bracket. And we have here a first one, we have here a second one, and we have here a third one. So these brackets or what we have inside the bracket is called a code block. And each code or any line of code that we ever write, we will have to write it in such a code block. So in such a bracket. Now here you also can notice that uh, these code blocks are also displayed hierarchically. So there is a certain uh, hierarchy within these code blocks. And each code block needs to have at least a name and something that would describe exactly what it does. We see here in this case, we have namespace and you see that this is a keyword because it's marked in blue. So this means that it is a C sharp uh, keyword and we don't bother to understand right now what a namespace is and does. We will do this a little bit later in this course. And then we have this my first app 10, which is the name. So each code block needs to have those. And we see that this first code block is then uh, specific or contains the namespace. Then the next code block inside the namespace code block is this class program. And once again, here uh, we have inside this class code block, another code block that is uh, specific for a method and we'll see later what uh, methods are. And inside this code block, we have written then our line of codes. Important to note here uh, with the C sharp syntax right now, after this very first hands on approach with C sharp, we have these brackets that define a code block. And from now on, we will always uh, talk about code blocks. And this is a very important aspect from the C sharp syntax. You always have to have the code blocks right. So if you have an opening bracket at a certain point, it needs to have also a corresponding closing bracket somewhere in the code. And you will see that when we write a lot of code, sometimes maybe we just delete a bracket or forget about it. And in, in those cases, we will have some errors that C Sharp will uh, uh, make us aware of. Uh, however, the brackets are a very important part of the syntax because they define at code blocks. And once again, to understand each opening bracket needs to have a corresponding closing bracket. A next element from the syntax that is very, very important here is the semicolon. So each line of code needs to end with a semicolon. If you don't put a semicolon, let's, let's delete this one. What it will happen is that you will get some errors. And in fact, you can notice here this red squiggly line here that uh, tells us, hey, something is wrong here. And if we hover the mouse over it, it also tells us that semicolon is expected. But there is also another place uh, where you can view all your errors. 
and this is on the error list. Normally here in the bottom bar you should have error list. If you don't have this error list, then you can activate it by going on view here on the menu bar and here somewhere you have uh, there is error list here. So you just have to click on it and then the error list will be displayed here. And in fact, the good thing about this error list is that we have here not only the message or the description about what is happening, but we also have something here, uh, which is a URL that we can click on. And what it would do, it will simply open a help file where we will be able to find more information about this error. And in the beginning stages of our de software development career, this is really important. So the error list is really important. Make sure that you can see it on your screen. I will make this uh, now a little bit shorter. So once again, semicolon is very, very important. And to sum up everything that we studied so far regarding the C-sharp syntax, in C-sharp, we have code blocks that are defined by opening uh, and closing brackets. So each uh, bracket, each opening bracket needs to have a corresponding uh, closing one. Each co code block needs to be identified by some uh, type of keyword and a certain name or type. And all our line of codes needs to be written inside a code block. So we cannot simply write code outside a code block. And at the end of each line, we need to have the semicolon. If we forget a semicolon, then as you have seen, we will have some errors. And believe me, at the beginning, forgetting about the semicolons is the more is the most common error that you will ever get in your C-sharp programs. So that's it for this video. I hope that you learned some few basic things about Visual Studio, how it is supposed to work and the way that we would need to think about our C-sharp syntax. In the next video, we'll talk about variables and hence also about data types and we'll see exactly how we can make our application be a little bit nicer by using some variables. So hope to see you during the next training.